Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, hello. <laughs> welcome. I'm back. This is the 15th episode of Formerly Child, the podcast. I don't like the name Child. I told you that last week, last episode. Um, I was talking to a friend who is probably going to do some episodes, well, probably like once or every while, do an episode with me. Um, I was talking to a friend and they were like, you need to change your, uh, like he came up with names and some of them I didn't like and some of them I got a little inspired. So I think, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all, I'm not feeling a hundred percent well and I'm even having like a hard time talking, not hard time, but it's like my voice is in, I don't know. I'm just having I don't feel good, 100%. Like, I'm better than what I was a couple of days ago. Because I went walking around my neighborhood. I've lived in this neighborhood for, like, three years. And I'm like, these are, like, beautiful houses. Very peaceful and quiet neighborhood. Like, you don't hear much at all. Especially where the houses are. Um, and so, like, I went walking on Sunday. Because I'm like, I need to go, like, I need to, like, get out of the house like i'm off i need to get out of the house i need to do something so i went to go walk for the first time ever and maybe i should have worn my mask because i feel like the (laughs) the trees and the earth attacked me right after i got back also i had eaten some like what i have i had egg rolls and what else did i have the tacos I might have had tacos. I had the egg rolls, tacos, and then I had a piece of cheesecake from Jack in a Box. And I probably should have done that before. I probably shouldn't have done that before. But because that made me feel horrible-ish afterwards. Um, but yeah, I just feel like the the trees and stuff, they were just attacking me because I woke up on Monday with like the worst sore throat. Well, it wasn't worse, but it was like a crazy sore throat. It reminded me of strep when I had strep like literally a year ago. And I'm like, do I have strep? I don't know. I don't think I have strep. I don't think I have a fever. I just feel like nauseous and like, I still have a little nausea, like weak. I feel weak. I don't feel nauseous so much now. Um, And drowsy. But I'm almost, look, I'm almost back to normal, hopefully. What was I saying? That I'm not feeling good. And then, so the name, the name. So I'm toying with two different names. Either it's going to be the, it's going to be Dare Show, Dare Vision, or, yeah, Dare Vision, Dare Vision. It sounds weird, and I hate, like, weird names, but that's what it's going to be. So, it's going to be, like, I think in a couple weeks, I'll make a decision of the Dare Show or Dare Vision after WandaVision low-key. I love Lon. I enjoyed WandaVision. 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 Um, Also... If you want to follow me, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just got an email last night from Anchor saying that my podcast is now on Apple Podcasts. So, yay, that's great. So, if you're listening to on on Apple Podcasts, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I was trying to, like I've been saying, I was trying to get it on there, but I haven't had like a computer or something to... Because I know previously when I tried to do a podcast, um, I had to like manually, you have to manually link stuff to this, to that, to go to Apple. So all of a sudden now, I, I actually, I do enjoy Anchor. Sorry. I enjoy Anchor because, you know, they're branching out. I guess it took a moment for it to go there. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure. But here we are on Apple Podcast. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at my love, my need tonight. I'm sorry. This is like the first time I'm talking today. You know how you just be in your house and you just, <laughs> you're just alone when you're alone, you're living alone and you're single. You don't like talk. I don't talk. Like I talk in my head and like, Oh, let me go do this. Let me go do that. 
so this is the first time I'm talking and stuff is coming up and stuff is coming out. Um, so please forgive that mess that you just heard. I just want to talk about a, some bunch of stuff. Uh, art pop. We'll just go with the art pop update. Art pop. Um, art pop has an update. Lady Gaga tweeted something this past week. She said, I feel apart after the release of the album. Thank you for celebrating something that once felt like destruction. We always believe it was... A- oh, Lord. <laughs> See, I forgot she said this because I went in a little bit on, on Twitter. We always believe it was ahead of its time. Also, please... Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. What's your opinions on? I'm going to talk about Art Pop. I'm going to talk about this Luther album a little bit. I'm going to talk about Married to Medicine. I think I might talk about these life stuff that I had to think about. But, yeah, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me, do you want Art Pop? I know the Monsters made a poll last week about wanting Art Pop 2, Act 2, or Chromatica, the remix album. (laughs) Okay, but anyway, so she said it's ahead of its time. We believe, we always believed it was ahead of its time. Years later, turns out sometimes artists know and do Little Monster, and so do Little Monsters. Pause up. I think that was the second tweet. The first tweet was the petition to buy Art Pop hashtag Art Pop on iTunes. Now, hashtag Pop buy Art Pop on iTunes is a hashtag her fans came up with, and Art Pop is now like the number one digital album. In the world or in America. I don't think the world. But the thing is, like, with these charts, like, do they really make sense if they're not, um, if they don't have a direct correlation to Billboard? Like, okay, I'm sure Billboard might have, like, a digital section, but they're not going to, like, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Like, her album, Our Pop isn't going back to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. I mean, Hot 200. For a fact. We know that. Just like with Justice for Glitter. But I think Justice for Glitter, I think Glitter went number one on the R&B charts. Or it was like top five, if not number one. So I'm like, I think it it takes a bit of more of an impact just to be number one on the um, digital albums. But it's number one. They got it to number one. And it's showing solidarity to... If we buy... Okay, wait. I should. I think she says it. The petition to buy Art Pop. To, the petition to hashtag buy Art Pop on iTunes for volume two for volume for a volume. Yes, volume two <laughs> has inspired such a tremendous warmth in my heart. Making this album like a heart sur- it was like heart surgery. I was desperate in pain and poured my heart into electronic music and slammed harder than any drug I could find. Also, I came across this. Um, I came across this article on Tumblr talking about our pop something. I forgot. I should have read it before now. I forgot too. Lo siento. Maybe next week. Um, our pop being ahead of his time is completely fabrication. I feel like that is the only justification you can make for the album not being successful mainstream i will say that again because i feel like this is true there are people saying certain things are not are ahead of its time meaning when people say that things are ahead of, are ahead of its time i feel like it's a weak justification for explaining why something didn't go mainstream at that time if you remember Katy Perry, our pop didn't, our pop didn't, um, conjure up, what's the word? There's a word for it. Our pop didn't give us any number ones off of the, um, album. As we know, I think the album was number one, but as we know, at that time, Katy Perry released her, um, Prism album. Fan fucking tastic album. We're going to talk about Katy Perry another day. I think I've talked about her already. Fan-fucking-tastic album. But that 
came out the gate with Roar at number one, and then I think Dark Horse went number one. Yeah, Dark Horse went number one, and then I think um, Unconditionally went number one also. I think. I don't remember so much. But then there was like this rivalry. Who's going to be number one? Who's going to... Um, why isn't Katie? Why is Katy Perry going number one? Our pop isn't going number one, and you know, Gaga was kind of still in that kind of strange. I'm not gonna say call it strange in a negative way, but she was in that strange, making music, mystical, weird woman aspect of her career. I'm not saying that she's not gonna go back to it, but I guess I guess because you know we're. The world has shut down, and we didn't really see much of that weird. Mystery. Like, if you know, you know. Like, our pop, like I said last week, was a weird, different era. And it coincided with, like, Born This Way. I feel like Born This Way and our pop were kind of like this weird era where she tried to... She was, like, just being a performance artist. Like, she loved a performance artist or whatever. And... You know, she released Applause, and there was, like, Swan. Like I told you, Swan. These are really great songs, but, like, they were kind of controversial. They were, like, loud, weird music at that. Well, no, I'm not going to say weird. I just feel like it was, like... <clears throat> oh, my gosh. It was just, like, weird. It wasn't weird. It was just different, and I don't think that it was ahead of his time, because I don't know what a part of ahead of his time, maybe, I don't know what a part of ahead of his time was being. It wasn't like it was Christina when, when she released, she was Bionic in like 2011 or 12. Right before, you know, electronic music had popped off. Um... So I'm like, I don't know what a part of, maybe like lyrically it was ahead of his time. I don't know. I don't know why people, that's the only reason why you would justify something not going mainstream. It wasn't a mainstream success. I think it went platinum, beautiful. It had a number one album. She had great touring success. Although on that tour, the album and her vocals on the tour were completely different you know, she's very soprano on her tour. I mean, on her album and very uh, alto tenor on her, on her her tour. Vocally, that tour was not the best. Um, then I think this is DJ White Shadow. He released another statement. Here he go talking again. You were heard. I talked to Lady Gaga last night and she shared her incredible joy. We made a plan to get together after Italy and discuss your wishes. Didn't I tell you she's focused on Italy? She's focused on making that movie. No promises made. Okay, then why are you telling us this? But kindness and love are strong as steel. Now is not the time to let up. Go harder for that for the past. Forget the past. Sorry. Think about the future. Apply positive pressure to the universe and let's make a diamond i'm so in love with you all okay thanks sir nobody asked for all of that <coughs> so then this week her fans you know her fans got our pop back to well it got to number one and they had like listening parties i was in a little twitter has like this like i guess clubhouse type thing now or Oh, excuse me. Everything is coming up and coming out. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> this is a mess. So, yeah, her fans had a little listening party. That's hard pop for you. I don't. If not, I don't really know what's gonna happen there. I don't want them to keep giving us hope and acting like they're gonna give us something and it's not gonna happen. Per the record label, or even per Stephanie Germanata. Have you guys been watching Married to Medicine? Okay, so Married to Medicine, I think this is like <clears throat> the eighth or ninth season. This is the most entertaining 
show in this COVID atmosphere that we had. You know, shows, they're shorter now, shorter seasons, or like The Real Housewives, they're hammering on like one subject, like one lackluster subject. Or, you know, yeah, the shorter season, like Basketball Wives, um, or the Braxton Family Values. <clears throat> I think the vacuum. <clears throat> I think the Bra- Braxton Family Values was like six episodes. And Tamar was in like two of them. Tamar gave no interviews on that season, that this last season. I was just like, damn. Okay, but anyway, so <laughs> Married to Medicine, there is so much great drama. And I don't know, I'm not going to say it's producer drama, because I do believe producers have a hand in the drama, definitely. <clears throat> so I have a question. So if you do watch Married to Medicine and Real Housewives, and you do watch like the post social media stuff that they do post show social media stuff they do like dr heavenly's reviews on the episode or candy's speak on it like if you do watch that tell me which one do you think is better i think i don't know why i said that because i think i thought of something and then I don't remember what I thought of last night. But I definitely enjoyed Dr. Heavenly's reviews on the um on the episodes. And last night she had Dr. Contessa on the episode. And you know, Dr. Contessa, she's been going through shit with her marriage and her her um professional life. So they were talking last night about the show, giving a little review and a little backstory and in story and more story to what happened. And so, cont- okay, so I watch Bonnie Blue's reviews. She's a YouTuber. She does reviews. Bonnie Blue. Um, Bonnie Blue thinks Contessa is a closeted lesbian. And it's like now that she said that, I can't unsee it. Like, I can't see it. I can't think about anything else. It's so fascinating because, like, in the episode, this previous episode, Contessa was talking to her husband's niece, who is a lesbian, in a lesbian relationship. And they're like, her husband's niece, let's call her Jamie. Jamie and Josephine, they're, like, living in the house, helping out with the kids because, you know, it's like a pandemic and they're busy and they're trustworthy is better with them than other other strangers so jamie and janice josephine i mean contessa was talking to jamie about their marriage and i'm like okay why are you doing this this is terrible and then she's like girl let's just go outside and get some wine and have fun well not have fun let's just go talk and she like poured the wine and then i think i didn't see it at the end but i think they said like her nipple was showing and she was just like girl okay whatever i I don't really care so it's just like coming a little like bondy your theories are definitely something interesting also we know about contessa and scott's marriage is that contessa They were in the military. Contessa uh, settled for what he wanted to do. I don't think she wanted to come to Atlanta, but he wanted to come to Atlanta. And that's where they are. They've been married for, uh, she said, 16 years. And she was, um, they were, Heavenly was asking about their relationship with like comments asking about what's really going on in their relationship. And Contessa, she indirectly says, or she gave like a feeling of he could be cheating and I don't want to know about it. Or I don't need to know about it. Slash, I don't need the side chick to come up to me and talk to me about it. Like other people in the past, um, like 
most of the men on the show, well, not most, some of the men on the show have like cheated in the past. Um, so she's like, I don't need, I know, and I'm on reality TV, so I'm ready for anything. So she, I feel like you kind of have like a doubt in your mind that your marriage is that solid in that section. Also, she, yeah, she was like, I'm, we've, we were in the beginning, we were long distance and he's older than me. So absolutely anything could have happened. So I feel like she's like, weird. It's weird. Also, we found out that Dr. Heavenly and Scott, they have the same, I mean, yeah, Dr. Heavenly and her husband, Scott, Contessa's husband, Scott, has, they have the same birthday. And I'm like, oh, wow. As with Rose. What does that mean? Also, did you know Mariah, Heavenly was talking about how she came on the show and Mariah Hugh, Hug, whatever her name is, previously on the show, like the creator in a sense, the sort of quote unquote Nini on the show, Mariah gave Heavenly or gave the girls a contract saying, if you have any outside earnings on the show 20 percent of that goes to <laughs> goes to me and i only said fuck you bitch and left and then the producers were like trying to get heavenly on the show they were like what can we do what amount of money do you need to be on the show because i think Mariah was making it a little bit more difficult. I know, like, she, Mariah, Heavenly brought up with this one instance where they were at a party and Heavenly was invited, but Heavenly was like, I don't have my hair or makeup done. And Mariah was like, Don't worry about it, girl. And then she gets to the party looking, I guess, not as everybody, not as great as everybody else. And Heavenly was like, And fuck y'all bitches. And she's like, And I stayed there and I look better than all of them. I was like, oh, Okay. But I can't believe Mariah tried to throw him in a trick bag with a, uh, with the L.A. Reed contract. An L.A. Reed TLC contract. Like, this is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I was, I her Mar Contessa was very, very revealing. And, like, it, it doesn't, and my thing is, oh, that's what that meant. Okay, my thing is, Maybe you guys need to switch the roles. Maybe he needs to think about becoming a stay-at-home dad and you go out there and work harder than him. Maybe he can be like a part-time physician or whatever he does. Like, I feel like there maybe gets some compromise because she, like, was shady because um, I guess they had this money and she wants to open up a practice. He was like, I wanted to go buy a boat. And she's like... He wants to go help the sea out while I want to go help the world out. And I was just like, oh, gosh. And she said this on camera. That was, those aren't, the, like, the specific words. But it was something like that. And it was very, like, yikes. Was, like, y'all are really, I guess, going through something. And she's like, we've been stagnant for the last 10 years. And I feel like they're just like, we're not going anywhere. And... She's a Gemini, and she's just like, I don't want to, some stuff I can deal with, some stuff I can't absolutely not deal with. Also, Patty LaBelle was on, um, speaking of Geminis, Patty was on the Today Show, and this past week, looking really great in her blonde wig, her beautiful, I think it looks like her gold Mariah butterfly ring that, you know, they share. I love saying that. I love that when she wears that, it. so cute. Um, but she was on there talking about um, Philly and Philly food and her favorite Philly restaurants. And they had a man from uh, a Philly restaurant there. And they were just talking about Philly food and trying to get attention to businesses. And I guess it was a part of like today, the Today Show's home opening up America again. I don't know really what that means. I haven't paid it. I don't pay attention to them. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to see the video, but the video is on, like, the... If you just Google it, you'll see it. I might try to put it on my YouTube if somebody doesn't already. I thought that the, the Today Show would have put it on their YouTube already by now, but I guess not. 
So, yeah. So that was a little padding out. Um, yeah, that was, it was good. She looked really good. Except for... Never mind, I'm not going to say that. <clears throat> so, yeah, Contessa. So they're having marriage issues. I really love Contessa and Heavenly's um, relationship. They're really funny together. Contessa has been looking amazing this, like, season. And, like, even now, like, her, I feel like she's always wearing makeup. But I don't feel like... I feel like why do women always need to wear makeup? Or, like, a beat face? Like, I was watching The Housewives of Atlanta... And Drew, she was working out with no socks on, but her face was beat as fuck. And it was like, where are you going? Why are you working out with so much makeup on? It looks weird. Or it, in your mind, you think it's like kind of unnatural. Um, but yeah, contestants been looking great. Uh, that last episode, or was it two episodes ago? She had her, like, um, gray-looking scrubs on, her cute shoes, her nice wavy hair. Her makeup was nicely done. And she had her glasses on. It's like, Contessa is cute. Contessa's been looking great. But, yeah, Bonnie thinks she's a closeted lesbian, and she's not able to fulfill that part of her life because maybe she was born, like, 10 years later than... 10 years earlier than what, you know, certain people feel. Certain generations are separated, you know. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you think Contessa is a, les a closeted lesbian. They think her and her best friend who was on Married to Medicine LA, Britain, they think that they kind of, you know, <coughs> fucked around a little bit. Um, but yeah. Like I said, Mary to Medicine is very entertaining. Bonnie Blue, some... And it makes me not want to watch her reviews on it because I'm like, oh, you don't really like the show, so you're not going to really give a good review on it. But I'm like, everything has been popping from COVID to um, Dr. Jackie and um, Simone's ridiculousness in their relationship trying to repair. Simone acts like she doesn't want to be friends with this lady anymore. Uh, Dr. Heavenly thinks Simone is um, jealous of Dr. Jackie's success. Contessa was like, Jackie, Heavenly, and Quad have really elevated and used this TV thing to elevate their lives and their platforms and their bank accounts. And uh, Heavenly thinks... She Simone is jealous of Jackie. That's why she's not friends. Why so she doesn't really want to be friends with her as much anymore? Because she's like, Jackie's getting the awards. Jackie's getting the money. Jackie's getting the endorsements. Jackie's on commercials. Child, Married to Medicine is it. Okay. Then we have Toya talking about she, they just, okay, Toya just built her house. They just built the house. The house looks beautiful. It looks very modern. Very interesting. Probably not 100% my taste in some things. But they just built the house and moved into it. Why is the house already on the market again? She, I just like looked at this like snippet of an interview she did. And she was like, this neighborhood is booming and... My house, this isn't really my dream house anymore or something like that. Like, I could have done better with it. I could have had to build it better. It's just a bunch of nonsense. And it's just like, are you, just say you're having financial problems again or not. Like, it's, it's confusing. Like, are you going to go build another house? Or are you going to go move into another house? Like, it's, <laughs> I don't know. From that and then... Dr. Uh, Simone's son leaving, and then it, I low key feel like Dr. Simone's husband is very absent. I don't know if he's been absent in like fatherhood, it seems a little bit like he's definitely absent sometimes in their marriage. You know, he had like a little friend on the side that she thought was slightly inappropriate, and he was like, it's not, and he kept her around. <sighs> what a mess. 
But like I said, this is way more interesting than basketball-wise, way more interesting than the Braxton family values, way more interesting than um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills coming back next month. I'm so excited. I haven't watched the trailer. I don't know if I want to. See, I don't really like, like I told you before, I don't like watching the trailers and stuff because I feel like... No, I want to be surprised. I love surprises. I want to know. Like, I don't know what is really going on with um, my girl Erica Jane. You know, her husband is a mess, stealing money f- from settlements. I hear my Virgo sister Sutton is popping on the show. I'm excited for that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to take a break. Maybe go get some water because you can hear it. Uh, I'll be back. We'll be back. Last week, we lost DMX, the rapper. Um, Yeah. um, I just wanted to pipe in and say, you know, he did a song with one of my favorite singers, Patti LaBelle. And I was on, it's called Thank You. I'll put the, I'll um, link it in on uh, Spotify. And she she said something. She talked about that recording session. She said, I'm so saddened by the loss of a beautiful soul, DMX. I remember when we recorded together. He and his wife had a room full of roses and beautiful necklace waiting for me. <laughs> and he always was so sweet. Sending my love and prayers to all his family and loved ones. So yeah, shout out to DMX. Shout out to the song Thank You. Um, it's a cute little quick song. Uh if you haven't listened to it, like I said, I'm gonna put it in there. Um, shout out to DMX, shout out to Patty. You know, Patty, she <laughs> she loves herself some hip hop music. Uh she loves herself some rap. Uh, you know, fifty cent, Tupac, little DMX, uh, yeah, we stand, we stand. So, Kiara shared, Kiara shared, she has a book out called, what is it, Big, Bold, and Beautiful? I don't really know what the book's about, I don't really care. Kiara... I feel like she's trying to be deep sometimes when <sighs> Kira shared the singer, gospel singer, Karen Clark shared daughter. I feel like she tries to be deep or she tries to be mature in her thinking or try to, yeah, I just feel like she tries to be deep and feel a philosoph- philosophic. No. Very like a philosopher. Mixed in with like a God philosophy um, type thing. And it's like, girl, I think she's like 30 or something. Like, girl. No. Like, it just, it comes off like she's always trying to give us something informational and it's like it seems like i don't feel like she necessarily always has it together or she's always figured it out like just wait a minute before you give us advice on certain stuff kiara but she um reason why i brought her up because she was talking about um she did an interview and she was talking about her music and branching off into which one came first? This t- okay, this one came first. Branching off into R&B music. So the interview said, a lot of R&B artists are rediscovering their love for gospel, releasing re- respective projects like PJ Morton and Kelly Price. Do you ever think you'll step out on faith and record an, R- and record an R&B album? She says, I could see myself doing that for sure, especially now that I am married. There's a different letter that I'm now writing to myself as a wife and to my husband, the king that he is in my life. I absolutely can see myself writing a love song to him or having an album that is love songs for him. It's like, okay. So you're only going to write it now that you're 
married. I low-key feel like her marriage came kind of quickly, but that's none of my business. It really, it's really not. Um, she Then the interview said, who are some of the artists you would like to join for that particular project? She says, I would love to work with her. I was always... Um, I all I was up early this morning cleaning the house with my candles lit, blasting her through the house. I would love to work with Lucky, Lucky Day, and Kelly Rowland just for fun. She's just fun. I don't know what we were saying, but I love Kelly. I would even like to do some work with Michael Bublé. So yeah, there's that on Kara shared, possibly releasing a gospel, I mean an R&B album. Um, as we know, you know, her, the they had a TV show, the the um, Sheards. I forget what the name was. It might have been called The Sheards, or Keeping Up or Catching Up with The Sheards, something like that, on BET, and it only was one season. And her her brother, J. J Drew Sheard, he's a producer, and he, like, was branching off into, like, I guess, like, hip-hop, beats or something like that and his family like tore him or his mom and dad mostly tore him up and they were like we can't believe you're seeing this vision as this and where's the god in this and stuff like that and as we do know i think we know from the movie karen wanted they or from the movie they said they wanted karen to go solo and i think she always I don't think she wanted to do, I don't think they asked her to do R&B, but I think they wanted her to do solo, but we can imagine, already I've told you, you know, his love, the riffs that runs on there is mixed with the R&B beat, definitely makes, like, this hood beat, definitely makes this, like, song sound like an R&B song, but because, you know, you're singing about God, I think, you know... The only difference with R and B and gospel is you're talking about a man. Well, he's talking about the man. Is but is it God or is it your man? So just like her riffs and runs, it's just like Karen. This song is so fucking R and B. It's amazing. I was gonna say a mess, but it's amazing. Not a mess. It's amazing. So we can always we can already picture what, you know, a R&B song would sound like. I feel like you probably would have to change up a little bit. You know, this is a wonderful video on YouTube with, you know, who I'm going to talk about, Miss Patti LaBelle. And she does, if you ask me to, in the R&B world, and then she does it in the gospel world. And I feel like, you know, gospel is more riffy, runny, bringing out this, the enunciation in the sentences. Well, gospel, I mean, where R&B is a little bit more relaxed in some certain ways and longer vocals, longer um, stretching it out. So, yeah. So, I feel, like I said, I feel like we can already see what an R&B song would sound like from Miss Kiara. And we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, I find it very interesting to be like dedicated, completely dedicating your life to God in that kind of way where you're only doing a certain, you're only doing gospel. I find that very interesting and it's, it's interesting and it's in a way low key. I feel like it's crippling because I feel like you can grow and yes, you can really, you can, you don't have to sing about sex all the time or anything nasty. Um, you know, God and me is a very fun our Mary Mary song. They're the ones that were like, let's modernize gospel music through our lyrics, through our production. They kind of paved the way for like, you know, a Kiara Sheard or um, maybe a Corinne. Not Stephens, not Superhead, y'all. I'm talking about Corinne, the gospel singer, <laughs> whose music sounds just like an R&B song, but it's played all the gospels. Because I've heard a co- one of her songs, and it's like, girl, who are you singing about? Are you singing about God? Are you singing about the man that just blew your black out last night? Like, yikes. Anyways, 
I listened to this album called Songs. And it's um, a Luther Vandross album. It was released in 1994, gained a ton of Grammy nominations. It was produced by Walter Asanafi, a Walter Asanafi, Afanasianef, Asa, whatever his name is. I can't think of his last name. Um, he was Mariah's co-writer and producer from like 92, 93 to 99. Basically, you know, her 90s hits. Um, I didn't know he produced this album. And the album is a bunch of uh, cover songs. Uh, I believe the backstory is Tommy, I believe, was like, Luther, you know, everybody loves, or, you know, the highlight of your albums are when you do the covers. Let's just do a covers album. Now, this album is basically ballads. A couple of them, I didn't know, came from this album. A couple of songs, like, Always and Forever. Oh, my gosh. That's really, like, the song. Besides, like, Endless Love... Always and Forever really, really is it. Um, I didn't know he did Hello. He did Hello from Lionel Richie's song, Hello. Um, Endless Love, of course. Like I said, Endless Love is really that perfect. It was really perfect. Like, you give a duet, you give a classic song... And went number t- to number two should have been number one. Um, like I said, it's very ballad heavy, and some of the songs he did a couple of Aretha songs. He did uh, a Barbara Streisand song. It's very like ballady, very slow, and I feel like he kind of didn't really show off his range. It wasn't much depth to the song to the songs that he sang. But you know, it's Luther. It sounds, you know, it sounds good, but it's not like my favorite. I wouldn't go back and listen to some of the songs. Love the one you're with. I thought, I feel like he sampled that on some other album or something like that. I'm I'm, I'm forgetting. But I do feel like he sampled that. Um, Like I said, Hello was nice. Ain't No Stopping Us Now. There's a live version he did with the Spice Girls. And I guess he like, I'm not going to say, I don't. I don't know if I really listen. I can't recall if they if it's like the same backgrounds, but I feel like they might have changed the backgrounds up and like he they did the Luther version with the Spice Girls, which I was like, okay. What the world needs now is love. Um, very beautiful, very nice, but like always and forever. That's the that's the jam. Like, he really... Like, I played that one over and over. He really gave it to us on that one. Um, what's this release on? Okay, anyways. Just a little tidbit, what I found out. Like, I had not listened to it. Like, I think I've heard about it. And then I believe Mariah, like, um, requested that he do certain songs, which is, like, really cool. They did an interview in, like, Japan. So, a couple of days ago, I was on Twitter, and... I'm finding, like, it's very interesting, a bunch of life hacks that are happening now. Especially, like, when I was in high school. I feel like high school was a weird... It wasn't weird. It was just a rough time at times for me. Especially in, like, math. Like, math is not... Math has never, ever been my subject. And I remember, like, I even having to go to, like... Went to, like, this tutorial thing my mom took me to to, like, test me to... I don't remember what that was. But it was just, like, this other separate thing I went to one day for math. And it never helped. Even when I, like, I got... I had to get transferred from another school. Not because of anything bad. But I had to be transferred to another school. And... um. It was difficult. It was difficult to grasp the aspect of math. <laughs> math is just so... T- 
difficult for me. Like I can do simple math, but like when you're going to like algebra and then uh, I, I never went to calculus, but like when you go to the algebra and like all this shit, it's like, that's not my subject. That's not for me, baby. That's for somebody else, not me. Um, but like you look at all these like little hacks that weren't available when you were in school or that weren't these hacks that nobody really talked about or maybe they didn't know. Um, like I saw this one, it was like how to times by 11 and it was like, um, you do the like 63 times 11. So you do 63, six plus three, that goes to the bottom number, and then you do six plus or six times one or three times one, something like that. But I'm just like, you know, nowadays, but there's a bunch of hacks and a bunch of like theories and things. Like I've seen a couple like um, math hacks that have come out. And it's like, damn, wh- what was this when I was in high school? Because I really did have a hard time. Like I had to repeat algebra one and then that kind of pushed me back from geometry because you're supposed to go from algebra one, I think, to geometry to algebra two or something like that. And I think at one point I was taking like, was I taking two math classes? Or is that just something I'm garnering up for the dramatics of the situation? But anyways, another thing I came across was <coughs> somebody talking about car loans and cars and upside down loans and how people they want cars but they don't know that they want cars and they want a certain amount of um monthly payments but it's like can you afford to pay that in the long run instead of just right now and people are like, Aren't people, don't people realize, oh, shoot, hopefully I can find the tweet. They were like, can't, don't people realize what kind of um, upside down loans you're possibly going into? And I'm like, people are like, no, we definitely don't. Bookmarks. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to tell a story while I look for it. Um, it was about because uh, I'm almost done paying off my car, and I really do want a new car. Um, I've talked to God about it. I've I think about it like every day. I want a Hyundai. Like I think I've told you before, I want a Hyundai. Hyundai's are killing it, but I do want to go test out the Blazer, the Chevy Blazer, definitely. But I, I ultimately want a Sun, uh, Hyundai SUV, Tucson or the Santa Fe. And so I got this car. This car is not really what I wanted. It's not what I thought I was getting into. So I really needed a car at like three, four years ago. It's like three years ago now. And the thing is, I had no credit. I didn't know you needed credit. I was like 22 at the time, I think. Um, Nobody tells you, you know, you need credit (laughs) to get a good car. Oh, here we go. Serious question. Do people not realize at the moment of purchase, they're, come on, they're upside down on the car? I think this person was like, my husband bought a car. It got in a wreck. It's not salvageable. Do we get a new car or do we spend money on it trying to fix it? And then somebody said, they don't know. Salesmen and average buyers focus on the down payment and the monthly payment, never the overall price. It's so easy. That's true. It's so easy to drive off the lot with a car. The buyer usually think they won. The expensed the experienced buyer focuses on the overall price and value. I was focused on the overall price because I wanted a car that was like 10000 I can pay this off quickly. 
I think that car, because I went in, I really need a car because my transmission had went out. I went to Nissan, fuck Nissan. I went to Nissan. They were like, uh, yeah, let's get you in a car. This dude, I remember his name. I remember him because I just feel like I kind of was duped a little bit. He's like, yeah, let's go get you in this car. I get in the car. I test drive it. It's great. It was enough room. That's what was really, at that time, that's the thing I really needed. Like, I'm a tall person. I'm very tall. I think I'm over, like, 6'2". I don't really know the height specifically. Um, But I went and got a... Uh, I was like, I need space. I don't care about anything else, really. I need some space because I need to be comfortable. <clears throat> And at the time, I wasn't really into anything. Like, I wasn't like, oh, I want to, what's the name of this car? Or I want that kind of color. With me, I feel like life is life experiences and things. It's, I just need to experience it to know if I like it or not, or know what I want or not. And that comes to, like, you know, my first apartment, my first car. Um, Yeah. Thing, just, you know, kitchen stuff, bathroom stuff life stuff like i'm saying so they, i guess they ran my credit or something and they were like well we can't get you this car so see you next time <laughs> so i'm like okay so i'm like at work scrambling trying to figure out what's next so i get a call from them they're like hey we can get you in a car today you just need to come back because i guess like nissan does like you know poor people loans and stuff like that it's not poor people loans, but, you know, I'm thinking, exaggerating. It is something shady that goes on. But it's in a shady, helpful way. So, um, I get to the dealership, and they're like, yeah, we got a car for you. I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'm thinking this dude, he remembers me. He's like, yeah, he, you know, he said he needed stuff, something he can work with. I get in the car. I don't get the car immediately because they're working on it, putting in a trans... Was it a transmission? Or something they're putting I think they're putting in a new transmission. Because I think the radiator in my old car went something went out of my old car. But whatever, whatever. They were putting something new in the car. I think it was a transmission. And it had not been done yet. So they were like, here, take this loaner car. It's similar to the one you have now. Take the loaner car, which the loaner car is better than my fucking car. But anyways, the loaner car was um I had the loaner car for like a month. My family was like, you need to go back up there and tell them you don't want this car because there's something wrong with it clearly and they're not giving it to you, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I don't know, which I probably should have. Did I sign that contract at that time? I don't know if I did or not. I think, yeah, I think I did sign the contract and then they gave, yeah, they, I signed the contract and then they gave me the loaner car. But the thing was, so I was paying. There were, but okay, let me finish that part. So they were like, "Go ahead." We're oh, like I guess the director of this Nissan. He was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry for the wait. We're gonna try to get that. We're we're trying to get the car to you immediately. The car is here. We're just trying to work on it." I was like, "Okay, whatever." I was very like, you know, passive, naive, young, not knowing really what's going on or what to do. Um, I end up getting the car, the car, the car. Oh my gosh, the car. One thing I remember about being in the dealership, this man, he was having a decision. I guess he was having a hard decision on what to do. And so the, um, what's the name of the dealership? The salesman, he was like, you need to pick out which car you want because you're going to have to pay for it and it's going to be yours at the end of the day. And I'm like, that is so true. Everybody, get the car that you want. Get the car. Make sure everything pricing is right. They didn't tell me the car was blank a blank amount of dollars when I got the car. I'm paying this high-ass payment because I had no insurance. So then, therefore, the interest rate was extremely high. I'm going to tell you, the, the interest rate was like, 25%, 2,500%, something like that. It was, it's crazy. Um, my car now is not worth much at all. I have another year to pay it off. Um, I'm finally at the mark of 10,000. Thank God. It's nothing but God that I am able to pay for this car each month. Um, 
with the, you know the, the job I have, thank God, is nothing but him. Oh, it's truly a blessing. But then now I'm sort of at this point where I'm like, do I want to get a new car right now? Because then I realized, oh, that turns into a, you're in an upside down loan. So first of all, your car isn't worth shit, mostly. <laughs> it's not worth much. And then whatever you don't pay now, you're going to have to add it onto the new car payment. I'm just like, oh my God. Why America is a mess. The world is a mess. We live in this world. Everything around it is is free. But yeah, you wanna not only you want us to pay for stuff, but you want us to pay the highest price for stuff. And everything keeps going up. I'm looking at cars now. Cars aren't like, you know, fifteen thousand anymore. They're like, you know, twenty five, forty thousand, fifty thousand dollar cars. And it's just like not everybody has that kind of money, sugar. What is going on here? America's fucked up. The world is the um, the world is fucked up, but America is worse. To be honest, um, the thing with this car that I have now, it scares me a little sometimes driving it. I'm like, okay, we're gonna go today, or we're not gonna go. The my, the gas mileage, the gas is incredible. Like the gas, I love the gas, and I got compliments on the, this guy. He was like, "Oh, you, that's your Nissan. Oh, I want. Tell me when you want to sell it, because I know it has great gas. And the gas, the gas is killing the game, y'all. It's small. I'm a tall person. I, I don't like driving far, far. It's uncomfortable. Then we have the screen issue. The screen goes blank." Ever since I got the car, the screen has been going blank. Maybe I should have brought it back. They told me it was like 30,000 miles on the car when I got it. When I got into the car and drove it off the lot, it was 60,000 miles on it. Um, but the screen keeps going blank, and that affects what I see and what I don't see. It always, like, is malfunctioning. Not in, like, a bad way, but it's always, like, blurry or it'll, like, flicker in and out. But that does affect... Because this was what happened last time I got an oil change. They didn't tell me what my next oil change mileage date to come in in. So now I'm like, I don't know what to do. So now I'm just like, oh my gosh. So please. And they did not tell me the amount that it was worth or the amount I was going to pay. Like it was no like, it was just come in and get the car. And I was like, okay, I'll come in and get the car because I need a car. Have experienced people around you when you get a car. Go back and check. Ask numbers. Look at pricing online. Look at what it's worth. This experience has taught me, and it's a whole new experience. And now I feel like I really deserve to get a new car because I feel like I want to hear the ding, ding, ding. I remember when I was valeting. When I was valeting. I had been sequestered in my house. I was at like a valley at like 21 or something. Or no, it was like 19. I would have been 19. It was my first job, valeting at the casino here in uh, Shreveport. And because I was like in isolation after high school, living in like a really small, small town, country, not much going on, nothing around. I didn't have a job. I didn't, I was just like, I, I was probably, I think, I, yeah, I was probably depressed and didn't really know but it wasn't like an overwhelming it was like a subtle subtle depression and so i had not seen the world and i didn't know there was like these keyless cars and you know these push to start buttons i had no idea so when i was valet i was like what the fuck is this so now i'm very like fascinated it's sort of like when i um like when I missed out on an album and now I'm like, oh, let me really look into this album. Let me really look into this car. Let me really look into this thing. And now, you know, everybody around me has a keyless remote start car and uh, Bluetooth in their thing. And I'm not complaining. I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful. But I do want more. I do want like a better car situation. God willing. God blessing. That will happen one day soon. And the thing is, I was just tweeting about it. And then a family friend or my our family friend came up to me and was like, yeah, so when are we getting a new car? And I'm like, things happen and they're not for they're coincidences, but they're not on accident. And we're going to see. We're going to see. 
God is blessed. So why not keep blessing? So I'm going to end it on that note. But definitely, if you're a young person getting a car, if you're somebody older getting a car, really look into the details. Ask for questions. Ask the pricing. Ask what the payments could be. Ask what is going on. Also, figure out some way to build your credit. Because now I know, in America, you're going to need credit to do certain stuff or else you're going to have to pay for it. In a, you're going to really have to pay for it in the back end. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening. Shout out to Apple podcast. I'm on there. Shout out to me. I have a bunch of stuff to do. I was like sick, really sick yesterday. I didn't do much yesterday. I have a bunch of stuff to do today. Shout out to this new name of the podcast. If you want to follow me, tell me what you think. Tell me about, you know, what do you think about car loans and the duping and, interest rate and um credit scores tell me what you think about that also what is your favorite car what's your dream car tell me what your dream car is tell me what you think about our pop are we do you think we're gonna get it i don't think we're gonna get our pop i would be surprised if we do um if you listen if you, what are your favorite luther covers i think mine's is always and forever definitely definitely um What do you think about these life hacks that are coming up now? You're like, damn, I could have used this 10 years ago in math class instead of repeating it. (laughs) What do you think about Contessa being a lesbian, a closet to lesbian? (laughs) What do you think about Married to Medicine? Are you enjoying the season? Is it better than the other shows, like I said? Um, Let me know. Leave a comment uh, go to my Instagram, leave a comment on my YouTube, leave the leave a comment. Thank you for listening. My Instagram is my love money tonight. This is the end of the possible dare show or the dare vision. This is episode 15. Here we go. Thank you for listening.